I don't know, but uh, they did. They bought these shirts for the staff, and uh, we were sort of in the transition between doing uh, Bandolo radio and television at the time, and I pleaded and begged and whined and whippered, and somebody gave me a shirt. And this is the first time, it was about 10 years ago that I got this shirt, and this is the first time it's ever been worn, and I thought that because this is our final night, our final two Dr. Bandolo performances here at Expo, that it would be only fit. Oh, it would be only fitting that I wear the shirt. So that's the story of the shirt. It's not something that I would go out and buy myself. You're, you're a Canadian. Yeah. Are you the guy that the red shirt was sitting over there? I'm glad to see you back. If anybody in the audience they don't know where to laugh or where to react, just do what this guy does. He's crazy. He's great. We should have him in every audience and every theater in the world. Why don't you leave now? No. He's the best, he's the guy with the best laugh in British Columbia. Can do it again? Yeah, he's gonna laugh his face off tonight if you want. So, we're here to perform two Dr. Bundolo radio comedy shows. This one, and then get another one at 9.15. We've been doing our trip at Expo right since the very opening on the 2nd of May. And uh, this is where the bird dies, or the swan song, or whatever you want to call it. We invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy yourself, have a good time, because that's what we intend to do up here. And thank you in advance ever so much for coming. You made a very wise choice. Well, you know, for once I agree with you. 
You're absolutely right. And I think that well, you know, when you look around this magnificent expo site, and you see all of the achievement in communication. Yeah. You see the laser technology, yes. the micro wave there, micro the satellite up there. You know, oh, no. it's oh, wonderful. Yes, sir. But I think that it's we Canadians that have provided the best example of communication on Expo. The, the giant hockey stick. stick. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. No better way to communicate than. Uh, with a good old cross jack! That's <laughs> what that matter, you can drive home a point with a butt in the oh, 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 yeah? Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, even without Verdine, okay? The Canucks are gonna crush the half. Oh, ow! Ow! Oh, 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 ow! Oh. Which best expressed the Canadian reality? Gentlemen, Miss Radom Jean Perrins. Welcome indeed from all ipso facto, straight away hence, if you will, to the National Arts Federation here at the Canada Pavilion. Out of the countless dozens of entries, you three have been selected, in fact, if not chosen, as the finalists in our poem Canada contest. The fact that you were the only contestants that could afford Expo 86 season passes, <laughs> or weren't stopped at the gates of security risks, played a part, I suppose, but anyways. Now, the moment we've all been waiting for, with bated breath and buttocks that quivered upon the nether edge of our feet. <laughs> oh, you recognize last year's winner. <laughs> the reading of the poems which will determine which one best expresses the essence. The quintessence, Nemo, the dewy decimal number of the true Canada we all know and love. Platonically, of course. <laughs> First, Miss Fiona Radomchuk to read her free verse of poem, Canada. Land of unborn dream, eternally alive and yet to come. Ladies and gentlemen, Fiona Radomchuk, please. Oh, Canada, struggling to be hatched from the shell of history. Land of Eskimo escapades and whispering wheat. Rise up, Canada, rise up, my beloved Gesellschaft der Scheißen. Lift the beaver swollen arms of thy river. Draw the light of a new day and beyond to heaven, Nirvana, or rebel stoke. <laughs> Is this a dagger I see before my eyes? Nay, nay, to the city of Edmonton, city of dreams, the city of the everlasting garbage. to read his poem, yes, Canada, land is home native to me, the P.K. Covenant of Agriculture. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.
I might add that Mr. Govananda Bajikatra will be teaching remedial grammar to engineering 100 students. <laughs> yes, and I also have another business. Oh, yes. Yes, I am operating a driving school. Oh, good. <laughs> And I have successfully graduated 75 catchy drugs. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do I that's then? the one that goes over the line. I don't know. Do we win the party? No, no. no. Our final contestant is... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from Shakutmi Hot Spring Beast, Monsieur Francois Le Duc, to read his entry, Canada, she's where I was born. Who asked you, eh? <laughs> When it comes to knowing what Canada is all about, I know the score. Montreal 7, Red Army 4. <laughs> wonderful. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Well, I suppose it's all over now with the shooting. <laughs> Mr. Francois Latouf has walked away with the Cross Canada Poetry Contest first prize. Dinner for two at the barge. <laughs> with Grace McCarthy. <laughs> What's the second prize? Second prize? Dinner for two at McBarge with Laurier Lapierre. <laughs> Why don't Laurier and Grace go? I'll stay home. Okay? Yeah, good idea. <laughs> it's 6.15 in Toronto. In Montreal, the clock is striking La Bonne, La Bonne, La Bonne. <laughs> And in Vancouver, the big yellow Swiss watch and expo is being worn tonight by visiting tenor Luciano Pavarotti. <laughs> Which means it's time for the CBC Canada Pavilion Bundle of National News. <laughs> Good evening, I'm Melvin Nevish, and first the headlines. Mulroney says new plan will save the post office millions of dollars. Jehovah's Witnesses will deliver the mail. <laughs> Here's another headline. Author Farley Mowat, eaten by Timber Wolves, film at 11. And now the details. That's over Canada, at the Mall of the Parliament buildings in Ottawa. Prime Minister Brian Mulroney leapt into action and apologized profusely for his buildings getting in the way. <laughs> Unemployed longshoremen in Regina and voted... <laughs> voted unanimously today to move to a city near water. <laughs> Bottomless nightclub opened last night in downtown Yander, and several people fell in. In sports. <laughs> in sports news, a shocking incident in Boston. A light aircraft with South American markings exploded high above the Boston Marathon today, showering 3.7 tons of high-grade cocaine down upon the participants. <laughs> No details are available, but the 8,000 Boston Marathoners were last seen passing through Red Deer, Alberta. <laughs> at 78 miles an hour. <laughs> the Canada Person Power Center says there is no reason for anyone to be unemployed in Canada, as these fine jobs are available as of noon today. A Canadian chemical toilet firm requires a frozen cesspool analyst for night shift work in the Northwest Territory. <laughs> Applicants must have more than two years' experience in frozen cesspool analysis, or its equivalent, a master's degree in business administration. <laughs> and finally in the news, Laszlo Manchuk, a young Edmonton man who said his life's ambition was to be a stud had that ambition fulfilled this morning when his girlfriend's irate father drove him into a snow tire. <laughs> I know that that is the 